Whether you are an undergraduate student, master's student, or PhD student, or even a faculty member, you find yourself at some point have to read a research paper or multiple research papers, whether it's part of your course project, whether it's part of your research area, whether it's part of your daily routine. If you find reading a research paper a cumbersome, actually you are not alone. Almost 60% of undergraduate or even PhD students find reading research paper frustrating. Even one of every two postdocs find themselves frustrated when reading a research paper. Finally, more than 40% of academic faculty members find reading research paper frustrating as well. Part of this may be because of the information overloading the number of research papers that you have to read in a certain topic to be expert in such topic. Do you know that currently we have 2.5 million of research papers published per year? If you don't imagine this number, this is more than 200k research papers per month or more than 7,000 research papers per day. This huge number of research papers made reading research papers a critical part of your duties as a researcher, whether you are a graduate student or a faculty member. According to this study that is published in 2005, as a researcher, you spend 144 hours per year reading research papers. Even in a more recent study that is published in 2011, as a researcher, you spend 17.25 hours per week reading research. Moreover, because of this number of paper explosion, a study found that if if you publish a research paper, then there is a probability of for almost 47% that you are going to cite 30 or more papers in your article. Also, there is a 50-50 chance that you are going to read more than 10 papers for every single reference you are going to cite in your article. And a 25% chance that you are even going to read up to 30 papers for every single reference you have in your article. This is a huge number of papers that you have to read. If you don't have the right way to read a research paper, that means each time you read a research paper, you spend a tremendous amount of time, you get confused, and you don't get the best benefit out of your time reading this research paper. Welcome to Great Grad. In this episode of Great Grad, we are going to discuss how to read a research paper effectively to get the most out of your time and out of this paper. And hey, by the way, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications about our future episodes. If you thought that reading a research paper means reading the, from the very first letter of the title and up to the last dot in the paper and reading everything in between, that means you are mistaken. The right way to read a research paper starts even before starting reading such paper. The first step in our methodology to read a research paper effectively is to apply what we call the why, how, what model. According to these three questions, you are going to categorize every paper and classify it to put it in one of three buckets or circles, as we will see. The first question is why you are reading this research paper? Because the way you are going to read the paper depends on the reason why you are reading it. The answer for this question would be to put the paper that you are reading in one of three categories. The first one is you are reading this paper to gain a general knowledge in the field or you are reading this research paper because it lies in the broader field of your expertise. To give you an example, I'm a computer engineering researcher. However, sometimes I find myself reading some physics articles from maybe nature, maybe science, to gain a general knowledge about a recent breakthrough in physics. This is such for gaining knowledge about a field that you almost will never come and do research in, but it's just as human, you are interested to know what are the breakthroughs that are going on uh, in science. An example of broader field papers, if I'm in computer engineering or computer science, and you work, for example, in my research expertise are like in embedded systems and computer architecture. Every paper that lies on those two broader fields, it lies in this circle. Sometimes I need to read some papers from this circle to gain a knowledge of what is going on that may intersect with my area of expertise. The third reason that you may be reading a paper is the paper lies in your specialized field of expertise. Like the example that I gave you, if you work in computer architecture for embedded systems, the, any paper that lies in intersection of these two, that means it's within your specialized field. You are supposed to be an expert in this field. This is your PhD study. This is the course that you are studying in your undergraduate and you are required to uh, write a paper, a research paper on, or a survey paper on, something like that. And this paper you're going to put in this specialized field uh, circle. So according to these three things, whether it's the general knowledge, broader field, or specialized field of your expertise, you should 
assign the paper that you're going to read into one of these three things, into one of these three circles. The second question is how? How does this paper relate to your area of expertise? According to this, you also put the paper in one of three circles. The first one is you are a layman or a street man in the area of the paper. So again, if you read it for general knowledge, then most probably you are a layman. Your knowledge is just everyone's knowledge about this field. Or the second thing is you consider yourself a modest expert in the field of the paper. Or the last thing, you consider yourself an expert in the field of the paper that you want to read. The last and third question is what? What are you looking for in this paper? Are you looking for the big idea of the paper? Or are you looking for what is the contribution of the paper? Or the third thing is, are you looking for the details of the paper? Something like implementation or proofs. As you can see now, all the three questions are related to each other because if you are reading the paper for general knowledge from why, then you are a layman in the field of this paper. And lastly, you are going to look for just the big idea. Or if the paper lies in the broader field of your expertise, you consider yourself a modest expert in the general topic. And then you are looking for the contribution of the paper. The last and most specialized circle is the paper lies in your specialized field of research. You consider yourself an expert of uh, the topic of this paper. And then most probably you are looking for the details of the paper. By asking yourself these three specific questions, then you have to put every paper you read in one of these three related circles. By doing this, we will see now how to read each paper based on which circuit the paper is in. In doing so, we introduce what we call the three BAS model. Each paper, you read it using one or more of the following three BAS. So you do in general three BAS for the paper, you just don't read it once from the beginning to the end. And based on which circuit the paper is in, you may stop at the first BAS or second BAS or a third BAS, as we will see. So what are these three BASs? The first one is the BAS for general idea or general knowledge. In this first BAS, you do four steps. The first one is you read carefully the title, abstract, conclusion, and introduction of the paper in the order that I just mentioned. Title first, abstract second, conclusion third, and then introduction last. You find title at the beginning of the paper. Title is most probably what attracted you uh, the first thing to read this paper. And then the first thing that you find after the title is the abstract. Abstract is very short in most papers, high quality papers. It is one paragraph, two paragraphs at most. And then it gives you a very high level abstracted idea, hence the name abstract, about the paper, the context of the paper, uh, what are the main contributions and what are some of the results of, of such paper. And then usually you find conclusion at the end. In conclusion, you find the main remarks of the papers that the authors want to highlight at the end, the main takeaways, the main conclusions out of the paper study, and it's usually also one or two paragraphs. And then finally, after the abstract at the beginning or the front end of the paper, you find the introduction. Introduction is usually bigger than abstract and conclusion. Maybe it consumes one page or slightly more or less. And in, in introduction, in most high quality papers, introductions should be written such that they are readable by everyone. If you are looking for general knowledge, what is the main context of the paper and related papers? What are the contributions? What are the main points that the authors try to convey from this paper? All should be listed just in introduction. So in the first phase, actually reading introduction is the most important step out of all what we just mentioned. So the second step in the first pass is reading background or motivation sections. Some papers, they have a separate background section. Sometimes it's within the introduction, as we said, sometimes if the background is large and it requires some brief knowledge about the topic of the paper, it's listed in a separate section again, usually at the front end, maybe directly after the introduction. And background is a very good chance. It's actually a gift that is given to you by the authors such that they wrap up what are the main points that you want to know before reading such paper in this field. So it gives you an opportunity to learn about the topic in a very basic way. And then similar to the background, some papers, they have motivation in a separate section if it has a bigger context or some details. And in motivation, also it's written in a high level. And we, we call all of this 
uh, abstract introduction background motivation the front end of the paper because it's written in a very high level it should be readable by everyone and they present a very good chance for you to get the bigger idea of the paper without delving into the details as we will see later now given you have done this the third step would be don't read everything else just skim through the titles of the sections and the subsections and titles would give your mind what are the main points that are mentioned within the paper without coming into details and then finally the last and fourth step is to skim through references and this is a very important step to, to give you an idea about the wording or the language that are used in the context of this paper top tier papers usually cover most of the high quality related research so it gives it opens also the door for you to go further if you want to know more about this topic so just skimming through references will increase your general knowledge about the topic of the paper now you remember those papers that you categorized or classified in the bigger circle which is you are looking just for general knowledge the bigger idea you are a layman in the topic then for those papers it's more than enough to stop at the first pass you just get the general idea from the front end you don't need to spend your time wasting your time reading details that most probably you are not going to understand unless you want to study further this topic and that's it you are done with these papers you don't there is no need to read everything and you got what you are just looking for on the other hand for other papers that are in the inner two circles then maybe you will now go through the other two passes as we will discuss right now so let's go to our second pass unlike the first pass in the second pass you are going to look for specific contributions of the paper so it's as you can look into this as a more detailed layer after doing the first pass also in this pass we will do four main steps the first step is to skim through sections text but ignore all deep details like proofs like equations ignore all of this just skim through the text of sections you remember in the first pass we skim through the titles of the sections now you go a little bit deeper and skim through the text itself but stop don't read equations don't waste your time trying to go through proofs keep this this for a later step if you need to the second step is and this is a very very important step is to look carefully into figures and tables in the paper as they always say one picture or one image is better than a thousand words high quality papers usually try to visualize their ideas the main principle behind their study or research work in a figure or multiple figures and by looking carefully into these figures and read their captions carefully they give you a good idea about some of the contributions and the main principles of such paper also the good thing about figures and tables is in high quality papers first there is a relatively enough number of them not too many not too little so there is just enough to explain the paper within the limited space and the second thing is usually they are made as self-contained which means the figure itself and its caption should explain the main point that the figure is making without going back to the text and reading the text details so just fo focusing on figures and tables will give you the main bigger ideas of such paper in the third step of the second phase now it's the time to understand the context of the contribution of this paper within the bigger area or the related work to this paper to do this most papers they have a separate section for related work or literature review or it has multiple names but the purpose is always the same which is discuss papers that are already published in the topic of the paper that you are reading and they discuss how the paper that you are reading right now contributes or adds to the knowledge compared to these papers how they are better or worse in certain aspects so the authors of the paper discuss their contributions with regard to existing work and this gives you a very important idea about what was the contribution of such paper and also it gives you in a very nutshell what are the most related papers to this topic so maybe it gives you hints of if you want to read more about this and they discuss other papers in, in a very high detail so it's a very good chance for you to know not just the contribution of this paper but also about the general field the fourth step you do in the second pass is to highlight interesting references you remember in our first pass we skimmed through references we our mind got some visual ideas about what are the keywords what are the most related papers or the interesting ones now it's time to either highlight or take note on the side of 
what are the papers that you may need to read or you, you would like to read in the future as an extension to this paper. Now, by finishing the second pass, most of the papers that you are going to read in your career, no matter what you are reading, will actually just finish here. And the reason is you got the idea, you got the context, and you will not go further for the third and the last pass unless you want to read the very specific details of such paper like proofs, equations, contributions, detailed results. And there are very few number of papers that you need to do so. So now you saved yourself a time, but also you got the most out of what you would like to get. So for example, the papers in the second inner circle, like they are in the broader field of your expertise, maybe you just stop here. You don't go further and do it in the third pass. But assume you are going to compare against a certain paper. You are writing a paper and you're going to compare and implement another paper. Then maybe you, now you need to read it in details. Or for example, you are writing a proof and then this proof relates to a proof in an existing paper. Then now you need to go ahead and, and do the third pass. So for those very specific papers that are in your specialized field and you want to get most of their details, you are going now to do a third pass. This is why we call this third pass the expert read. In the third pass, now we will read everything in details. But as you can see, we didn't start by reading everything at the beginning. We delay this until the end. And now when we read everything, our mind already has previous information, the main important contributions, the titles of the sections, the main important figures, so you know what details to look for or what you should be expecting in each section. So the, the reading now would be much, much easier than just starting from the beginning of the paper, read every single word and then finish at the end. Your mind will not have the time or the energy to consume all this information at once. But given now we did the previous two passes, even if there is a paper that you want to read as an expert and you want to get the details, now in the third pass, when you read it in details, your mind already is prepared by the first two passes, such that it will be much easier for you and hopefully not that frustrating to read such paper. Now, similar to the previous two passes, in the third pass, we also do four steps. The first step, as we mentioned, you just read everything carefully and you go through it. You read proofs, you read equations, you read methodology, you read basically everything. In the second step, and this is a very important advice, you have to pay attention to the claims of the paper and challenge them. Don't just read for sake of knowledge. Now, given that you are an expert on the field and your mind already has some information about this paper, when you come through claims of the paper, stop carefully for a second, think about those claims and try to challenge them in your mind. Try to come up with a counter example or try to come up with a case where such a claim does not apply or what are the limitations of certain assumptions in, in the paper. By doing so, you teach yourself to be more expert in the topic and also you teach yourself to be a critical thinker of this field of research. So this may even open ideas for, uh, for your own work. You find a limitation on this paper and your mind thought about this, how to come across this limitation, how to improve over it, and then you come up with a paper idea. And one of the reasons why you read papers in your specialized field is to come up with new ideas to solve problems that papers weren't able to solve yet, right? So in the second step, make sure you challenge all the claims that are made in the paper and try to take notes of the limitations and how to address such limitations in your point of view. In the third step, think of how you'll be doing things. For example, you found a specific experiment setup. If you were the author of this paper, will you be doing the experiment in the same way? Or there is a better way. Again, this is a matter of critical thinking, but also a matter of training yourself how to become a better researcher. Especially if you keep reading high quality paper, which I encourage you to do, this will teach you how good or how experts in your field are doing evaluation, are doing experiments, are doing claims. And then if you think of how you do these things and whether you will be doing it in the same way or you have in your mind a better way, then you compare both things or you didn't have the way that you found in the paper in your mind before and now you learn something new. Test yourself when reading a paper. Will you be doing things in the same way? Will you be doing, presenting things in the same way? And this is related also to the fourth step. Don't just read a paper to get the technical details. And this is a very important advice for especially junior or starting graduate students. Most of the time you read papers to get the technical content, but that's not correct. Papers are much, much more than this. Authors do their best to sell and market their paper 
to get it across reviewers, make reviewers like it, and also to make other researchers and experts in the field read their work and value it. So learn from a paper how to write a certain expression or how to make a certain claim or how to prepare and plan your idea presentation throughout the paper. Also learn how you structure your paper and conveying your idea in a scientific and a structured and neat way. Learning all these things from a paper will teach you over time to be a better researcher rather than just getting the technical knowledge or getting a certain term or getting a certain equation or getting a certain number from evaluation. Reading a paper is part of your duty and part of your work and it actually can be a very good mean, a very good teacher for yourself to be a better researcher. By this we finished our episode today. We discussed a more effective way for reading research papers to make it less frustrating and uh, more fruitful. We did this by first starting by the why, what, how three question model, categorize every paper in one of three circles, and then introduced what we call the three bass model to go through a paper in a gradual way or a step way rather than just reading everything from the beginning to the end. I hope this was useful to you and see you soon in another episode from Great Grad.